things in life that you can stop, and there's certain things in life that can't be stopped. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yo, 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 it's the, the delinquent show. Oh my god, this is going to be a great show after the week we've had, except for that Liverpool, which we're not going to talk about at all at the moment. Welcome, Johnny Pollock. What's happening, brother? All brilliant. For once, I can say brilliant. Been a tough couple of days. I've been without a blower. I've had a death in the family. But uh, the phone's back. Happy the days. Happy days. And Not, the show must, must go. go on. The show must go on. Just like to thank Da Vinci Mobility for their continuous support. We love you guys over there. Not sure where Blakey is. He is up to something. I don't know what he's up to, but he probably will come along later with Colin. I'm sure. Johnny, we've had some good shows lately, but this show is going to be an absolute corker. Shall we crack on? Shall we crack, crack on? on, lad? Crack on. Roll on. Straight out the bag. Shout Straight out. out of the onion bag. Hey, before you have the shout out, I think I should have the first shout out. Go on then. Shout out to my homie, my brother, GC himself. And if you don't know who GC, Gaz Chowdhury, he's rocking it down there on Broadway with his uh, show, Grenfield. If you've not seen that show, you missed the class. It, it was absolutely amazing. Brother, keep doing what you're doing. I know you're training out there as well. So, rock to my brother, man. Rolling on Broadway, man. Yeah, you better explain to people. We're talking about Broadway, New York, not Broadway, Liverpool. Nah, we're talking the brother is on Broadway, New York, with his show, Grenfield. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Go ahead, you can take the rest now. Well, the only other shout-outs we've got this week is Gabe again, the Australian referee. Bloody hell. We spoke with him lots during the uh, women's repechage. The Aussie fans we were interacting with, I know they had a lot of disappointment watching the uh, Aussie women, the gliders. And uh, the messages we got from our friend, DK, Dave Kelly, Yes, DK. What's happening, Top brother? Man. I got a message. Comes up, plus 6-1, this number, during what the last game. I'm thinking, who the f you know, is this? So I had to write back, who's this? He says, it's Dave Kelly. I'm thinking, hang on, this has come through on my iPad. How's he got my number? I didn't Someone get... giving out my number. Yeah, he asked for it. He's a super fan, lad. He's a super fan. Like, you're not that famous that I can't give you a number. I did up to tell you after the after the fact. Now what you, you did. Now what you've got to do, Dave, is just pester him. <laughs> Indulge him. Pester him. Put, just keep sending him stuff that doesn't even matter. But, yeah. But, anything else before I tell you what this show is all going to be about? No. Fire away. You're the host. I'm the host of the most. The host of the most. I wouldn't say the most, but you're the host. Why? 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 Because you haven't got Blake here to bully. You decide you wanted to bully the host of the show. I'll turn it off. I'm not a bully. Yeah, I'll turn it off. Anyway, it is Repercharge. We're going to refresh the Repercharge and all different things of the Repercharge. Let's rock it, Johnny. Over to you, man. You pull it in well, for us. Where do we start? Men or women's repechage? Don't forget, this is the first in history, this repechage system. Will it continue? I don't know. Let's go Does with the depend? let's go let's go because let's go with the men's to go first, or do you want to go with the women's? No, I'm happy with the men's. Let's go with the men's first. I thought it was a great repechage for the men. I thought it was it was Really exciting games. Uh, I think it's a good format. Definitely a good format, but just needs a little bit of tinkering. So I enjoyed the men's repertoire. I think the tournament actually is a good idea. I think the formula to the 
<coughs> reference yards is wrong. I'll give you some in insight why. So, I think the reference yards is going to help in regards to an extra tournament, promoting the sport, all things positive. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's gonna make it's sh it's like a feeding pond, if you look at it, for the big fish that go to the Paralympics, which it's there for. It's a feeding pond for that. So you get rid of the small bait. Is that a good thing? You know, uh, African me, teams. For me, when are we going to see African teams again at Paralympics? For me, it's it's not a good thing because the Paralympics should be for everybody. Everybody should get a chance. Like I've said. The repertoire idea was good. How they get the teams to the repertoire, I think, is a bit of a problem. I would like to see, and I don't know what you think, the winners of each zone automatically qualify. That's the first thing. So yeah. that's four spots. I'd like, that. I'd I'd like, like to that. see the automatic qualify. I don't care what level they are, whatever, because to me, the Paralympics should be for everybody. So... And I don't think a team like Morocco, who won their their group, and they won it, no matter what that happened in the repertoire charge, should then have to go through another qualifying stage. So I think... Okay, so look at it from this point then. The teams that have qualified for the Paralympics in the first... The automatic qualifiers for the Paralympics. So we had one from Asia... Yep. One from the Americas and two from Europe. Yep. Right? So, let's say it's the winners of each yep. zone. Yep. You take Spain out and you put Morocco in. So, the Paralympics could be or would be in your state, USA, GB, um, who won the Asia? Australia. Australia and Morocco. And Morocco. Yep. And then the four winners from the repechage. Yep, but I think I I think we've got to get back somehow to twelve teams at the Paralympics. At, at the Paralympics. And that, it, that's I, where that's where I agree. Right, that's I think we've got to get back to twelve is. teams at the Paralympics. The reason I say we've got to get back to the twelve teams, because I know we're talking about the repechage first. Because what is the point in a Paralympics with eight teams if it will just be like what the repper charges. Nobody's going to play until the quarterfinals. Exactly. There has to be uh, there has to be a reason to put effort in in the groups. Yep. And the effort is to qualify for a, a knockout round. Yeah. So if you look at the repper charge, let's talk about the repper charge. So we know we've got the four qualifiers that came through. We're in the repper charge, and basically, it looks like. Canada tanked it, if you know what I mean. Yep. And then put all their eggs into that final game. They didn't probably... But it they, worked. They didn't care which position they were in going into it. Yeah. Because they knew they were going to win at least one game, so they wouldn't be facing probably the top seeds on the other side. But... <clears throat> they only won one game. Italy won three. Yeah, I know. Okay. So, with that in sight, with that in mind... Should there not be also what we're talking about putting pressure on group stages at the Paralympics by having more teams going back to 12? Yep. Two groups of six. Or even if you had two groups of five, you had to, there's only four that can go through in each group. So you've yep. got to win something along the way. Yep. You've got it to, has have to be the same in the repechage. Yep. So, like the repechage, I, I love it. <coughs> I thought it was great. The only problem I've got with it is it was only eight teams. I think the rep charge has to be 12 2. So it's 12 teams, two pools, or 10 teams, whatever it is. So you're not automatically going straight to the quarterfinals. You've got to play. Yeah. You've got to play. Exactly. Now, here's the other thing. The other night when we were all in having the chat about trying to work out what the groups will be for the Paralympics, going off the seeds. So we said, like, if USA's in Group A at the Paralympics, GB will be in Group B. Well, to Then me, Spain will go with USA. Yeah. And Australia will go with GB. So that's the 
that's the top four from the automatic qualifiers. Now, what they should have done at the repechage is play to a final. So then the bottom four are seeded. The winner of the repechage will be the seeded of the bottom group. Yes, I, uh, I don't necessarily agree with that, really, because I think, it's just my personal opinion, you might have a different... I think the top four seeds have to be the direct qualifiers. So then for the bottom four, is it FA Cup? It's FA Cup style. How exciting is that going to be for a draw? The top four seeds can't be drawn. Well, they're going to be drawn. You're going to have two and two. And then the other four, just pick them out out of the app. I don't think you need to, because don't forget, they haven't qualified. So why should they have a seeding? They should just be able to, you just pick them out of a hat. But you say, it's, you know, like, it's a bit like the Champions League, isn't it? The Champions League have the seeds. Yeah. They have yeah. the seeds in the pot and they pull them out. You'll only get two seeds in each group, which is the same with the Paralympics. You've got USA, Great Britain, Australia, and the last one, Spain. Okay? So... Yeah. You don't. You're probably not going to put. You don't want to probably put Spain and GB in the same group. So you're probably going to have to separate those two. And then you got USA, Australia. So I would do it. That's how I would probably do it. They're, they're top seeds because you can't have somebody who's come through qualifying being a top seed. You can't. Yeah. You, you can't have Germany. You can't have. No, no. Totally agree. Canada. Just because the problem, won got, it. the problem I've got with it, with it, no pressure on the group stage at the Paralympics is, like you said earlier, it's just going to replicate what's just happened in the repechage. Yep. So the, the group old... stage will be irrelevant. However, I honestly <laughs> believe in the Paralympics, there's going to be two key players for GB that are going to average thirty minutes in the group stage. Yeah. So the only way, <laughs> the only way. To give jeopardy in the Paralympics, and it's extreme. There's no quarterfinals. You go straight to the semi-final. If it stays at eight teams. If it stays at eight teams. Yeah. I think it's pointless, a quarterfinal. If you look yeah, at the repertoire, totally <coughs> if you look at the repertoire, it was really good. There was close games. Everything was good in the group stages. But really, it meant nothing. Because yeah, they're all yeah. going to go to the quarterfinals now. Well, it didn't mean nothing. It only meant something to the team that got Morocco in the crossover. Yeah, which, but... Which ended up being France. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, you, you, that, you're correct. But there's another argument as well that the host nation should always be, as long as they're a top-ranked team, the host nation should be a direct qualifier. Exactly. Because... But that implication won't fit in with only eight teams going to a Paralympics. No, it won't. Unless they've already unless they're one of the top so if for instance, the next one in LA, USA are gonna be direct qualifiers because I can't see them not qualifying. So that's all right. It's when you get these other Olympics, which you're gonna get, it probably won't come back because I don't know where the Olympics is after LA. What? I think cutting both out is wrong. And by both, what I mean is the hosts don't automatically qualify. Yeah? Yep. Anymore. But that doesn't really make sense. No, wait a minute. So what they've cut away right now is the hosts don't automatically qualify, right? Yep. And the other thing they've cut out is the winner of each zone doesn't automatically qualify. I don't think you can cut both of them out. One has to stay. I think you've, it's got to be... If the hosts are automatic, then you can't have a winner from each. Why not? Why not? Because then the repertoire becomes three. Yeah, how exciting is that? Then you go Then you go. quarterfinals, semi-final, final. You see what I mean? Yeah, now that would work. Now because you go then quarter it's final medal winner of the repechage. Yeah. So then you go exactly. quarter final, semi final, final. I think and you just gotta look at the repechage in France, okay? Yeah. Crowds were there for the French team. There was nobody there for the rest of it. 
Yeah. Is that what you want your Paralympics to now become when there's no host team? And this yeah. is just, you know, I think France have been really unlucky because France have been up there. The women have always been in the Europeans and we'll talk about the women later. The French team have qualified. They've had they've had a couple of goals at qualifying. If you three. think about they've had three bites at the cherry qualifying. Okay, so they got they didn't do it in Euros. They got automatic qualification into the repressards. So it doesn't really make sense, really, because you gave them automatic qualification to the repressards, even if they weren't in that top echelon. Why didn't you just give them that spot? What's what's the problem with giving France the host nation a spot? The reason yeah. I don't think they gave it because they wanted four spots. They just wanted four spots at the repper charge. But if you'd have gave three spots at the repper charge, what would have happened? What would have happened? Yeah. That would make the repper charge a tournament if they make it three spots, like you said, and yeah. you play a final and a bronze medal game. Yeah. Obviously, the final doesn't really mean a thing because they're both there. But, gee, the semi finals are going to be cracking. The mm -hmm. quarterfinals are going to be cracking, and it means that teams can't tank during the group stage. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, right. That's what that's that's what's needed to be eliminated from the repechage, the tanking of the groups. Yeah. So even if you move to twelve teams, so you, the Paralympics is going to go back to twelve. You've given out five spots because obviously the host, but you won't have to because if you think about LA, you'll only have to give four spots. So that yeah. means there's eight spots available. Which means you can have an African team. It shouldn't be elitist. The Paralympics yeah. should not be elitist. I don't know where yeah, it's come the from. The Paralympic movement was all about involvement. Yeah, and it shouldn't be elitist. But it is elitist. It's sad for Morocco. They worked so hard to win their group. Because we don't know if it's going to be Morocco. We don't know if it could be South Africa the next time round. But we all, we all know that Morocco, the African countries... And, you know, you're going to have India coming through and Thailand coming through those teams. I'm not as strong as the, the European teams, but the repertoire, the men's, was dominated by Europe because we had so many positions. Now, is that fair that we get so many positions? Well, whether it's fair or not, it goes off the fact of the qualification points and positioning of the worlds, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's, that means it always will be dominated by Europe. But then, can others not break in at the Worlds? Yeah, but you're talking one to... Is it one? How many have they got? 16? One to 16? Yeah, the strange thing is, when you look back in... If you go on Wikipedia and look back in the history, at one point, <laughs> men's wheelchair basketball was two groups of eight. Right. But if you look at it... Teams. But if you look at it now... And this will look at the Paralympic qualifiers. Name the qualifiers we've got. It's top heavy with Europe because they've got oh, so no, many yeah. spots, and it can. Well, we all... predicted there was a chance for four, four of the repechage men's had be Europeans. So by do, chance, do we want to continue for Europe to dominate, or do we want to make Europe more competitive and the rest of the world more competitive? You know, like if you think about it now. We've got the men's repertoire, charge. We've got the teams. We've got Australia. We've got Germany. France. GB. USA. Who have I missed so far? Netherlands. Netherlands. And Canada. Canada. And there's one more. Who have we missed? Five from GB. GB Spain. Uh, five Spain. from Europe. Spain. GB Spain. Spain. Yeah. Right. So we've got them. Now... That shows you it's top heavy with Europe, yeah? Do we want yeah. to just have a Paralympics every four years that's going to be like that? Well, look at it right now. There's a possibility the groups of the Paralympics in Paris is going to have, it could be USA and, three, and then three European teams. Yeah. Now, if you want to make that basketball world more competitive, you give left spots to certain nations like Europe why have we got so many spots so five we've got five spots why have we got only three we can only have a why don't you say you can only have a maximum of a certain amount because we put we've that, got, but no, it's but, an elitist that's why yeah but because we've already put two through straight away 
but nobody else has had two. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Everybody should have only got one, and everybody else fights. If Europe comes through it, and if you make it a bigger rep charge, Europe comes through with more teams, that's fine. That's fine. Because why isn't America and Canada got? Because, you know, Canada were a big team in the past. But all, it's always been dominated by Europe, really. Yeah. The Paralympics has always been dominated by Europe. You're not going to see Brazil. How are you going to see Brazil? How are you going to see, like, a Mexico? How are you going to see an Argentina? How are you going to see any African teams? You know, we're missing Japan. Yeah, exactly. Tokyo's silver medalists, out. Yeah, we're missing Iran. Bronze medalists in the world. We're missing Iran because we've gone to this... Uh, 18 elitist. Paralympic elitist it's elitist and I saw a message on Facebook I can't remember who it was you know we want the eight strongest teams at the Paralympics that's not what it's about no it's not what it's about you want the quarterfinals to be the eight strongest yeah yeah of course you do but it's not what it's about it's about giving them opportunities that's what I'm saying so reducing it to eight is removed the, yeah. the the inclusion of Paralympic history. Yeah. The because, heritage of Paralympic history has always been inclusion. Yep. Yeah, so because they, they they're saying like oh we don't want to see blowouts you know that's that, I think that's what it's all about we don't want to see twenty point wins and all of that but hold on a minute it could still happen. Yeah. It's basketball that's what basketball is like you know why is the World Cup so great now? Why is it so great? I know we're not in that big level but why is it that's I'm say an analogy of football because world cup is their biggest biggest thing if you look at wheelchair basketball yeah we have our world championships but the paralympics is meant to be the biggest the pinnacle of sport yeah the world cup they nearly had their first african winner now if they continue if they continue down the road where they weren't letting these teams into the work the, the elite competition that will never happen it's no. like the paralympics now is elitist competition so mm. If, you, if that's what you're, as a young boy, dreaming of, and you're from in Africa, I want to play in the Paralympics, we've well, got zero chance. Well, look at it this way. What happened in Beijing? It's, different teams were there. You, no, but they got to quarter-final stage. Quarter-final was USA against Iran. And on political reasons, Iran chose not to play against USA, so USA got the bye. Yeah, but they had the opportunity. No, but what I mean is, imagine if you've only got eight teams and that situation happens. Yeah, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. I, you know, the repertoire charge is great. It's absolutely a fantastic thing. But one of, so one of the good things of the repertoire charge was the fact that both hosts, the men and the women's hosts, France and Japan, qualified. Because... Well... You know, Japan deserve that place. They absolutely punked Australia in that last group, yeah, but, in that but knockout the thing, game. If you think about it, with that, you say the host qualified, but only one of the hosts qualified, if you see what I mean. The host of, of that repertoire, but did qualify. Yeah, sorry, I'm going on something different now. I'm losing my mind. I'm, talking, I'm now talking about the French ladies, because we're, we're still into the men's. At the moment, so. yeah, I'm on about the quality, the, ho the hosts of the repechage. Yeah, both hosts of the repechage. I think it was much more important for the French men to qualify than it was for the Japanese women to qualify. Yeah, because I, I totally it, it agree. It was France's home um, Paralympics. Yeah. Now let's. I, I'll toss it to the girls now because I know we're talking about both, but the girls, such a shame. Those girls have worked how many years? That they'd known that they were going to go to the Paris. You know, there was going to be a lit Paralympics in in France. Yep. In France. <clears throat> was it 10 years they would have known that this, this was going to happen? Yep. You know, and really and truly, and <clears throat> if us English didn't steal 2012 from the French, those girls would have had the opportunity to play at home Olympics. Now they mm. don't. Now they don't. Yeah. So that's a sad case. It was sad. And regarding the women's repechage, while we've moved on to it, I, I'm not sure. I didn't point. enjoy it. I didn't watch it. I started watching I it. I watched but, it. But and I can tell you wasn't... now, I don't think it's needed. Yeah. 
I, I, I just because think it, it the was... the four people that qualified should have gone through automatically yeah. from the qualifying stages. And that's what I mean. This is this is what makes it a bit silly, <clears throat> is you've already... Up, the women's Paralympics only ever had eight teams anyway. Yeah, they only had eight teams. They've only been having eight teams the last Paralympics, so there wasn't yep, any know, reduction on that. The repertoire, to me, was done for the sake of it because there was a men's repertoire. Because I think it was pretty much a waste of money because there was no competitive games. There wasn't really a competitive game, to be fair. I think they no, there wasn't. Just... There were there were blowouts, and <laughs> and to be honest, it wasn't good watching. No, the interaction we had. Oh well, interaction I had with the people in the live chat, that was good. I mean, the commentating over in Japan, I know they spoke English, commentated in English, which was great for us, but it was dark. I ended up muting it. I can only only say the commentators of the repechage in Japan was like the voice you hear when you get off a plane in America and you get on the monorail. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Or, or when you when you get off the tube in London, mine the gap. <laughs> Please mine the gap. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't great, but sometimes. But you, last week, sometimes we, you mute it. Last John. last week we broke down a bit of info about the teams and the men's what had qualified and who'd played well. So to finish on the women's repertoire. Break down from what you see of the games you watched. I'll tell you why I'm saying this because of some things that were said in the comments of the live chat on YouTube. So let's review Japan the hosts. What was your view on them? What I watched of them, they were pretty slick on what they did, but to be fair. They were just pretty easy because I thought, on a whole, everyone's jumping out. Like I'll give you the game that was the crucial game, which I watched: Australia, Japan. Um, and like for a knockout game, it was dire. Honestly, it was dire. Yeah. Well. But the reason it was dire because, and I hate to say it, because like you know, we're a fraternity as coaches, but. Man, I think he was way out of his depth. Because well, don't don't we're not onto them yet. So Japan, yeah, I agree with you. Slick, but slick. The, t- the team basketball they play is brilliant. Yeah, they move the ball well. They get up and down the court well. Yeah, yeah. They, they 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 were good. They were good. They were Germany. Good. Germany was just Germany. To be fair, exactly. I didn't see nothing new. <laughs> no, Germany was just Germany. I'll it was different you. players, but it could have been Mar- Marina Moen. Yeah. It could have been the other kid. But I, I, yeah. I understand why. Why change something that's worked? There's no reason yeah. to change. The one that I was really interested in, and I spoke to you about it, was Canada. Oh, I'll tell you now. I was really impressed with Canada. I'm telling you, man, they're a dark horse for the goal, for the final. I'm not yeah. saying the gold medal. They may get that. I think they're a dark horse for the final because they're, the basketball they were playing and props, my hat's down to the coach, the new coach that's in there because I've been, you know, I've been watching Canada a long time during my work, you know, with measuring chairs and that. I've been watching Canada and they've not looked like that. They were the surprise of the tournament for me. They yeah. were slick. And to be honest, they play a style of basketball that, you that I've love. been waiting to see in the game for years. Love. And what it is, it doesn't matter what the shot clock's on. If one of those shooters is open in a position where they know they can score, they take it. It doesn't matter if there's 18 on a shot clock or eight seconds. Do you know what else I loved? I and loved we're, it. And we're, we're talking about the bigs always playing on the outside. The difference with Canada bigs is they did play on the outside, but if the guy rolled to the basket, they dumped it down. Yeah. That's what I found yeah. unbelievable. And that's what made them so dangerous. And those girls who got those dumped down the low pointers they made their shots they knew their role and they didn't look like low pointers if you they didn't look like cannon fodder they looked like part of a team it was an excellent job by the coach 
they're a dark horse for me. They were worth watching. Canada were yeah, worth they were watching. worth. Watching. They were slick. They, I love their basketball. It was just beautiful. Absolutely. Spain. Beautiful. Spain. I don't know. They got all the tools, but the building, the building correctly. I mean, I'm impressed with the. Uh... Frank Bellin, the coach. I've been impressed with him at Mercy or in the Spanish league. Because when you look at the team he's got, I know Lee Fryer's there and that. But he's getting the best out of what he's got. Mm. I've been impressed with Frank Frank Bellin. Um, but they look like they're building correctly, the Spanish. But then, finally, Australia. Now, I'm for the sure. viewers that didn't watch any games, let's break it down to you. They've been rebuilding. They didn't have Amber Merritt. And they had to bring three retirees out of retirement to give themselves a chance. And even that wasn't enough. Why was it not enough? Because for me, watching them, I don't think they understood what they were doing. Because as a coach, you watch lots of game tape and... You know who you're going to play in Japan. Are Japan an outside shooting team that are going to kill you from outside? No, they're no. not. But yet, and I'm sure it's instructions from the coaching team is, let's jump out, let's jump out when they've got the ball. And all Japan did, when they jumped out, set a pick, roll to the basket. Yeah. The other thing I spotted with the Australian women... The bigs ran out of steam. They did, um, but I also think you know, the lows have no idea what their what their role is in the team. Yeah, they didn't know. You know, they weren't great shooters, and it's it's it's, it's frustrating for an Australian team that that that's what they've been known the bread and butter, especially the men's and the women. You know, their low point is always knew what their role was. You no know, curl. Well, the, men, the, big... the difference is the men are rebuilding properly. They put an ex, ex, uh, Paralympian who's been there, got the T-shirt, done it all, in charge to rebuild the Australian national team. Now it's working. The Australian women rebuild. Looks like it's been rebuilt by a librarian. <laughs> he might be good at reading books, but he's not good at reading basketball. Yeah, I don't think he's good at reading books either. But... Craig Campbell, he was... But it was an embarrassment. I also, I also thought the girls didn't look fit, sharp. They they run out of gas. They yeah. they, they they did run out of gas. They, they had no ideas. You know, they scored four. Yeah, points. that would have been a tough. That would have been a tough one to swallow for the Aussie women. But at the same time, it must have been writing on the cards when you're having to bring three retirees out to yeah, try but, and qualify. Yeah, but the thing is, if you if you if you do bring three retirees out. They know what is warranted, right? But yeah. as a good player, you always follow what your coach tells you to do, no matter what you think. Yeah. So yeah. They, they can only be following the coaching instruction. And when you looked at that game, how many shots did their bigs get inside the paint? Oh, no. How comes they can't offensive rebound? How many rebounds did they give up? Japan... Yeah, but one thing I spotted with the Aussie women, when the bigs are taking a shot behind a one-pointer from outside, if the one-pointer is screening for a big, when the shot goes up, the one-pointer initially turns to go and get back in defence, right? But the big is still watching the shot that's gone, right? So then when the big misses and Japan got the rebound, when the big turn to get back in defence, they're crashing into the one. They're picking each other out, and Japan were on the break again. But they didn't. They didn't rebound. They didn't rebound the basketball. How many offensive rebounds did they get? Like we're not talking about a Ch Japanese team that shot the lights out of the ball. They shot the ball at something like thirty-four percent. Yeah. You should be winning games of basketball if you are shooting thirty-four percent, and they didn't really take any three pointers. Like any good coach would look at Japan. On the oh, table. I'm going a minute now. On the Someone table. did take some three pointers. 
one of the Canadian women in one match went four from five from three point land. Yeah, that's fine, Jon. Like, hold on, you've been taught and I've been taught when we were playing, and this is this is ironic from an Aussie, Muzz. What did he used to say to you? Why are you jumping out to him? He hasn't made a shot, but mm. he knew who to jump out. He would tell you, jump out. You remember training camps, and 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 it was. I think it was because he was trying, you know, you were a senior and he was trying to teach John Orr and the other guards. Do you remember what he used to say? If that, if fuck, I get, if that fucker gets another shot, you're fat. That was if exactly, I got a three off, they were pushing. Exactly. So he, he started them teaching them. Me. He started yeah. teaching them. They don't understand the game. And I think generally, <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying it's a women's thing, but generally, they don't, a lot of the, players don't understand the game you don't always have to jump out let's see if they can yeah. make it so that canadian made four or five shit you're jumping her after she's made two in a row she ain't yeah. getting another one but she made four or five now in this game that we're talking about aussies it was four they scored four points and then it got to i don't know they were kind of they weren't out of the game but they weren't in the game now you take away all of those pick and rolls, easy pick and rolls Japan got, and start forcing them to make the shots from outside. They only shot 34% at one stage. You take yeah. that away from them, which also means you're going to get more rebounds. Yeah. And that means you get on the break. You know, they didn't even change anything. You know, your bigs are struggling. They didn't even say to the ones, you know, coach didn't say to the ones, you know, go back, pick somebody. Let's get our bigs closer to, closer to the... The rim. It don't matter how many players you bring back. If you don't have a system that works yeah. and that the players understand, it looks like, to me, the Aussie team looked like he was in the airport, he saw 12 wheelchairs and went, do you, do you want to come and play in this repertoire with me? Well, there is a story about him, isn't there? I don't know. But it just, it just looks like that. Oh, I mean, what, what you got text. Oh, yeah. I got texted like, you know, that he didn't even know what pick and roll was. But he got but he got appointed the head coach of the Australian National Women. Yeah, it's, it's lunacy. He don't respect the low point as well. If, you're, if you know the wheelchair game, you know how crucial low pointers are in the game when you've only got bigs. I, do you know what? I can't even remember in that game, in the first half or first three quarters, when they actually had a shot. In the paint, they got. Yeah. They got. Yeah, yeah, no. Listen, if if the repertoire stays exactly how it is now, they got serious problems on qualifying. I know, yeah. So to recap on our repertoire's rewind for the men's, we think there needs to be group pressure. Yeah, there needs to be twelve team repertoire. Just make let's and make it women's... open. I don't think there has to be one. I don't think there has to be one. I have to second that. I don't, I don't think, think there has to be either. one. I think you can do it through the qualifying stages. You know, yeah. give, give give each, I don't know. So the Americas will get three. Uh, Europe will get, I don't know, three. And I don't know how you do it. You just give them two each, two spots each. I'm not sure. You know what that is? What? That's me with the reins. But you said I'm a host today. <laughs> the one them reins, what I'm pulling. Isn't it time for quote of the day? No, your co-host. Before we go to a break, let's have a quote of the day. Oh, go go ahead. Give me a quote of the day. You're having quote of the day. Oh, I'm doing quote of the day. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You put yourself quote on the, the day spot. Comes from after last night's football result. Which we're not talking about. Which we're not talking about. Bill Shankly quote said if Everton were playing at the bottom of his back garden he shut he shut the window he'd draw the curtains <laughs> and on that note we'll go to a break, break. <laughs>
anyone seen Colin? Has anyone seen him in Milton Keynes? Oh, we just thought, is he in the shopping centre? We don't know, is he in the pub? Maybe he's at his nans. Has anyone seen Blakey? Welcome to part two of the Delinquent Show Repertage Special. I hope you enjoyed our advert with Da Vinci Mobility, who will give you all your needs. Johnny, do you have a good break? Do you have a cup of tea, lad? Well, if I had a good break, I would guarantee whatever you've just had is definitely not Red Bull because that stuff gives you wings. Whatever that you've had, I want a glass of that. I've had wings. I've had wings, lad. I've had wings. Hey, talking about Da Vinci Mobility, do you know that you showed me a picture yesterday? You bought some beerings, didn't you? you well, you changed your beerings. I'm you the upstairs, yeah. Yeah, you know what you should have got? If you'd have got the beerings from Da Vinci Mobility, they wouldn't look like what they look like now. And you're going to show yeah. a picture of what they look like now. Absolute yeah. disgrace. Next time, go with our sponsors, right? Don't be such mm -hmm. a cheapskate. They might even give you a couple of free. I wouldn't. Vinny, Vince, don't give him anything free because he should have come to you in the first place. Okay, let's roll on part two. What we got, okay. brother? Is it emails and time? concerns? Oh, emails and concerns. Got two emails this we want to talk about, well, two subjected emails. We, we got we got nine sent in regarding the same oh, thing. It better be something exciting. No, it's boring. Ugh. But we need to mention it just so everyone who watches knows. And it was put to us by a former uh, GBWBA um, board member or vice president or whatever you call them that there is no AGM if you want an AGM you have to ask for one so if any of you members were, were saying to you vote no confidence malarkey it won't happen because there's no AGM so if you want an AGM you need to ask for one that's what we've been sent in by nine different people. Right, there won't be an AGM. Move on, move on. But in other news, yeah, let's we've get had this. Folk, why do you always, this... Why do you always start with that sort of news? Just let's get to the good stuff. This is the good stuff. Right, come on. So we've had this photo sent in. Have a look at this. Now that's Troy Sack coaching in the repertoire for thailand unlucky troy unlucky lad you done yourself proud and thailand proud that photo is a definition of what it takes to win now he was a winner at playing but the passion the fire that aggressive look that's what's missing from the game right now well you're right there because like there's too many coaches they're on their feet when they're on their feet when they're winning. When they're losing, they're so far back in their seat you wouldn't even know they were actually there. Problem is, also that kind of coach right now doesn't fit in in this regime. Why? That kind of coach is, is the passion. Why do you think? Tyler if he was coaching GB men right now, like that, parents would be stepping in. Yeah, but why do you think Thailand have got to? They were like one game away from being in the Paralympics. I know. Thailand. Listen, we're not talking Australia. We're not talking one of the big guns. We're talking Thailand were within a whisker of getting to the Paralympics. Now, if he keeps on with them, where do you think they're going to end up in LA? Yeah. They're, they're going in the right direction, I'm telling you. But you know, I wanted to put that email, the photo up from that email. Because I think that is exactly what coaching is needed. Don't need a degree in sports science. You don't need a degree in life or philosophy. You need passion like that. And that is why I wanted it highlighted in today's show. Yeah, because so coaching... Troy, keep up the good work. Love it. Yeah, because coaching is about passion. You've got to be passionate about what you do. 
there are going to be tough some tough times when you're, you're training, but you can't, it can't be a nanny state. You know, you just can't be because you're not going to be the best in the world. Well, what did we say? What did we say when we used to be on the bench for GB in Muzzy's reign and someone fucked up? We knew what was happening. We knew. We <laughs> nicknamed it. Here comes the her dry we treatment. Yeah, we knew. And he would get in your face. You fat... He, oh, I'm telling you. Yep. Yeah. Trying to keep a straight face, watching someone get the hair dryer treatment. And his teeth falling out. Oh. <laughs> but you think about that era, John. I know, you know, the kids nowadays, oh, they won't be able to put up with that. But was he a father figure to all of us? Yeah. No matter, we got that air dryer. And you know what I loved about him? And I, you know, I loved about him. He'd give you the air dryer no matter where you were. It was, he didn't yeah, leave it. he next to you in the dining hall. Yeah, but he wouldn't give you the hair dryer just in training. He'd give you the air dryer on a match. I had the air dryer more than anyone. <laughs> no, you didn't. Terry had the air dryer more than anybody. What, ha what happened in Perth at the hotel? Oh, you deserved that. Four-mile push to his car and then a four-mile push back. <laughs> you go off in your classification. So the ones went off. <laughs> then the twos went off. And I went off. Who got the air dry treatment? Me. For going off with the twos and the two and a halves. Get back. Start again. <laughs> you should have gone with the fours. Yeah, so when I get to his car, you meant to get to his car four miles away, get a, your bottle out his boot and have a drink and then head back. As soon as I got to his car four miles away, do you guess what he said? Go on then, turn around. Didn't even let me have a drink. <laughs> well, knackered. But Knackered. that's not one of my favourite stories. One of my favourite stories with him is, do you remember we was in uh, Willingong? Do you remember we was in Willingong? Willingong, yeah. And we was playing, uh, we were trying to play in Tristan's team, weren't he? Yeah, and Willingong. For the whole time, you're going to remember it straight away. The whole time, we were, you know, we always thought John Hall was a great bank shooter. And Mus said to him, you know, you've got to shoot the ball off the bank. And this is, this is just a classic story. So he goes on, he shoots two off the bank, makes them. Don't you remember? Then he, sh he just shot straight in. He made it. Must call time out. Time out. John, if you shoot straight in again, I'm going to fuck you. Good and proper. So I'm thinking, I'm sitting there next to him, and I'm thinking, well, he, he made it. He made it. He went straight in. John, you know, decides, you know what, I'll test Murray. He goes back on the court, didn't he, John? And yeah. he shot another one, clean swish, straight through. Muzz went, time out. What the fuck, fuck was that? <laughs> Get over there on the other court and do suicides. But yeah. the funny thing about that story is, Terry says, Terry says, didn't he? Terry says, oh, that's a bit tough, Muzz. So then Muzz says, well, do you know what, Tell? You can go and join him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't he? You can go and join him. And then and then he just looked and he went, And you, Pete, you're costing us loads because you're all, you know, you, you come with a pressure. Or you go and join him. And we're all like there. It's like, because this is, it, was this our first tour there, wasn't it? One of them, yeah. It was one of our first tours. So the game's carrying on. So do you remember we get to half time and we're talking about this is the first time. We get to half time. And then they come back in the other, didn't they? And he looked yeah. around and he went, what the fuck are you three doing here? Get <laughs> fucking back. So, so the game, this was the funny story. What the fuck? The game finished, didn't it? So they came in for the, to get, they came into the huddle for the game and said, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> fucking get back there. Even when we went upstairs having we a meal. We went upstairs <laughs> having a meal. We got on the bus, didn't they? And then he went to, he went to your dad. Somebody go and get them fuckers. <laughs> bring them back. Do you remember that? Love. Yeah, oh, that was comedy gold. Well, mentioning all them memories. But that was tough love. Yeah, it was tough but, love. But he was always a father figure for you, wasn't he? But well, we may as well break it to them now. Uh oh. So, one of the episodes that's coming up towards the end of May is going to be titled Memory Lane. Where me. 
Sinny and hopefully Blakey are going to talk about some of our domestic and international funniest memories. So watch out for that episode, Memory Lane, towards the end of May. Oh, we got some classics. That That's just one of them. That was a classic. There's 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 more. There's so oh, many. Yeah. Most of them were, it must to be fair, because he did make you laugh. You know. Oh, he, God, yeah. He, he was the funny. But, you know, he, he was probably one of the greatest coaches of his era. And if you, people will say, oh, what are you talking about? And, you know, look at the teams he built. The and team I'm, that won the Beijing goal. No, but what, what, what I'm going to say, John, is the teams that he built and left before they were yeah. finished. Before and afters. Yeah. He built the team that won the gold in Beijing. He built the team yeah. that won the World Championships in 20, 2018. They're all his teams that he built. He started the foundation for. People will go, oh, no, no. they are. Yeah. But that, I can't wait for that episode, Memory Lane, because that'll be classic i know i went off the treat but like that's the sort of coach i'd love that sort of coach and like i coach yeah, my son and i and i coach him exactly the same way and i coach the kids the same way and they don't you know they love it because like they just know you're going to be straightforward but they know you're going to be on their side at the yeah. end but there is going too far on that yeah. where they just are at that person all of the time at that person all the time what i think the players need to worry about is when the coach stops talking to you. Because when that happens... Yeah, silence is deadly. Silence is more deadly than if he's telling you something. Silence is more deadly. But uh, also, I personally got an inbox the other day off one of the level one and two tutors that wants to explain why they never... Because the, the name was mentioned in one of our past episodes. They wanted to break to me why they never uh, went on to coach at a higher level or international level. Um, I did reply saying, fire away. Yeah, if you want to explain it to me, let me let me know. Fire away. Nothing's come back yet. But if something comes back, be sure I'll uh, I'll break it to you all. To be fair, John, I think it's it's it's... It's tougher to coach an international team than it is a club team. Oh, God, yeah. And it takes something special. You know, we've got lots of coaches who can coach, who can who are training coaches. But how many, when you look at the game, how many do you think are match coaches who can coach yeah. a match? Exactly. Well, that's the difference. There's a tournament coach and there's a league coach, a, a game coach. And then there's a coach. Tournament, tournament coaching is a lot tougher than you think. Yeah, and, tournament coaching. And there's coaches who are brilliant coaches, practice coaches, so they can prepare a team. Yeah. And then, but then they get fried when they come to the match. And I could put my hands up and say I, I probably wasn't a great training coach, but I think I was a great match coach. I can make those instant decisions. So I think that's that's where we're missing. So when we're doing all these coaching levels, it's great you're having these educated people who've come through education. Yeah but they don't have tournament match experience because you can see you can see it when you look around and we watch a lot of games when you look around and I'm not going to mention anybody when you look around you see those coaches because when everything's going well they're on their toes they're you know pretending to lead everybody you go there you go there but when the chips are down they're silent and I always remembered playing or coaching against other coaches, certain coaches, you know, they'd feel the heat. You could hear, feel the heat. They start with their jacket on. And you probably know who I'm talking about. They start with their jacket on. And then as the pressure starts getting to them, the jacket comes off. They roll up their sleeves. And then they sit down. Yeah. They lose engagement. Hate that. In that. Hate that. But you got to think of if, if your players really know you, that's a telltale sign for the players. You know, it we, is, yeah. We've been coaching. You know, like they say in poker, when you get a read on a player. Yeah. We, we, I always knew, when I was coaching at the international level and club level, I always knew when I had that person because they have the traits. They have the yeah. traits. That, that That's their trait. And I always knew when they were in the game, so I thought, man, this is going to be a tough game because they had that trait. 
had traits. So it's not just about, you know, just being, going through courses. No, exactly. It's, it's loads, you know, and we're getting younger coaches. They need teaching, do you know, like need teaching about match coaching and, and that, that sort of experience and knowing the signs. Because Well, let me put it this way. With Muzz and John Hall, that relationship, if Muzz never instructed John Hall how to play guard, John Hall would have played like you, a hybrid guard, stroke forward, small forward, and that role would never have suited John Hall. That's, that's where the coaching gives you the role. The coach gives you the role of yeah. how he wants you to play. Yeah, but if you think about it, for years and years, that's what he tried to be. Who, John? Yeah. Yeah, until Murray stepped in. And said, no, that's not, this is what you should be. Yeah. Because, like I would say, my role, the way I played, and the role that I played is a difficult role. You've got to have a brain. You've got to be thinking all of the time. You've got to what? You've got to, you've got to be thinking all the time. Because no, before that. A brain. Something you ain't got, because you use like sticky fingers. You know, you, you've got to, because you're... Um, Ask to guard bigger guys than you, so you know you're not you you, you know you're not as uh, big as them. So you got to use different other tricks. Yep. You know, I got not blown me on. I got loads of offensive rebounds against bigger guys. You know, I can say in two thousand and two, the semi final. Look at how small we were, really. And Australia yeah. had three giants, but we kept them at bay. We actually got them fouled up, fouled out, because well, everybody. Did. Well, but everybody was in their right position. Do you know what I mean? Everybody knew what they needed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and that, that makes a difference. So the coach, yeah, he has to define the role of those players. So like, like we're saying with the Aussie uh, coach, he's got one point that's probably not going to be able to score as well, prolifically. So just to teach them how to curl, to get the bigs closer. That's all you need to do. They had a great point guard. It was good to see her back on, on the court. But they didn't really have nothing at either side. And then they probably the top scorer going through the tournament. The biggest game that they've got to get to the Paralympics, she was sitting on the bench. It's just madness. Just madness. It was madness. Let me tell you this. Changes the subject. I bumped into an old school friend to, yesterday. An old school friend? No. I, I bumped into an old school friend yesterday. I didn't know you went to school that long. <laughs> he started showing me. He started showing off, talking about his well-paid job and expensive car and that. You know how it is. Then he pulled out a photo of his wife and said, she's beautiful, ain't she? I said, if you think she's gorgeous, you should see my girlfriend. He said, why is she a stunner? I said, no, she works for fucking opticians. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd have to take over why Blake is absent this week. Oh dear, yeah. What else we got, lad? Not too long to go on the old Shelby Bobby. Um, we're not talking about the football, the shambles of Liverpool last night. I'm going to talk about it because I can't hold, I can't hold back now. We love you, Jurgen. Kloppy, we love you. You've done amazing things for us, but in the last few weeks, after question the selection of Curtis Jones. No. I have to question also, and I like him as well, Slobber Sly. No, I can't even say it, but I have to question, he's, he's just been giving the ball away. I don't know what's happened with him, and they just decided to, I don't know. I thought yesterday, McAllister was playing too deep. Well, because <laughs> the reason McAllister's playing that deep is because he's fitting Curtis Jones in there. Endo, you look at, on. it's like night and day, Sunday, when they played uh, Fulham tonight. And it showed yeah, it's the midfield. It was the midfield. Well, there was one good part of last night's match. I don't know if you witnessed it. I did. I turned the telly off. No, before you turned it off, I mean, you might have witnessed it. When the score come up, <clears throat> that Sheffield United were winning 1-0 at Old Trafford. You could hear Gary Neville say, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, remember, I yeah, absolutely yeah. love that Yeah, moment. yeah, yeah, I did. And then they went 1-0, then they went 2-1, and he... Oh, no. But yeah, yeah, you know, I think Liverpool season is petering out. They're still in with it. They've still got a chance because who knows what's going on. The way football's been played the last month, nobody knows who's going to get a few wins. It's like Chelsea. 
They beat Everton 6-0 and then they get battered by Arsenal 5-0. My goodness. But then, she just don't understand. Everton, the first time they've turned up all season, I believe. Yeah. They bullied us last night. Absolutely yeah. bullied us. That, that, that was the difference last night. One team fought to win. Another team tried to play to win. And yeah, the, but, the fight won. The thing is, my mine was, they just kept going down the left-hand side. Yeah. Well, Mo Salah, he barely touched the ball. And I know he's not in the greatest of form, but goodness gracious. When someone comes in a checkbook in two months' time for 150 million, thanks for everything. Yeah, Seriously. and the thing is, it may be Klopp's burnt out, which is probably the case. And he's he's tired, he just needs a break. Mm -hmm. But maybe the play, players need another voice. It happens. Yeah, it does, yeah. And if you think about Fergie, how he lasted so long, because he kept changing it up. Yeah, he changing did. it up. And that's yeah. why he's lasted so long. So we'll see who's the next man in charge. Hopefully we can get... Well, if we don't win this weekend against uh, the Amers, it's all over, isn't it? But, like I said, it's not it over yet. It could be a twist yet. You just never know. Because my home team, hometown team, the Spurs, could do, me, do us a favour against the Arsenal. But I'll tell you what, John, that game's definitely one you've got to watch. Because there's going to be no defence by nobody. They both need to win. It's going to be a, a barn burning. Either Spurs are going to win four or something like that, or Arsenal. I can't. If that's a nil nil, I'll eat me out. No, won't be. The only way, the only way that's a nil nil is if the game gets abandoned for something. Yeah. That, that ain't finishing nil nil. That's the only way that's going to be a nil nil. Well, coming up this weekend as well, we've got Euro Cup finals. Woohoo! Starting starting on Friday. Hold on, before you get the Euro Cup finals, we've got to say best wishes to, on their first adventure, I think they should be getting on board an aeroplane today, the Mohawks, the Mohawks on their way to Malaga, Jimmy, take it easy on them, they're only youngsters, good luck you guys, I hope you have your uh, good first adventure into Europe, You, it's brilliant, it's a brilliant experience for you guys, good job Lee, and good job Ray for building those teams and getting them to Europe. Yeah, and finally, if you're not watching Euro Cup this weekend and you want to watch a drama that is really good, check out Red Eye on ITV. Red Eye on ITV. They're all available on ITVX. It's one of the best six-episode six, six episode drama. It's off the scale, seriously. Ah, so that sounds good. But hold on, we can't finish without having the predictions. And, to be fair, I did have the sheet. I had a great week on predictions last week. I thought I did. You had a decent week, but I had a great week. Because I can't find them now, because the missus has been at my table, so I can't find them. But let's let's roll with what we got to... No pressure, like... Have I put you under pressure now? Because, like, you got to... No, get... I was on the NBA page because I was checking out the NBA results. But, you know, well, life goes on. What a result last night. Miami Heat going into the Boston Garden. Order. Tell them the stats Samuel pointed out. Well, Samuel said, and he's a and he is on at his trial today for his college to get into the the basketball academy. Uh, he's got an all day trial, so good luck to him. He pointed out that Eric Spolstra, I've got his name. That's his name, isn't it? Has yeah. won something like twenty of twenty three game two games. That's unbelievable. Don't stat that. Well, that's unbelievable. Considering they got buried in the first game, and he thought they were going to get buried last night. When I woke up this morning to see that they'd won, well, he even called me a liar when I woke him up. I said, Sammy, they won. No, they haven't. You're just lying, Dad. You just want to make me smile today. <laughs> I said, no, seriously, they've won. All right, fire away. Quick fire, why uh, we don't have Blakey's yeah, philosophy. Starring. Early kickoff, Saturday, West Ham, Liverpool. So I'm going Liverpool away win. They've got to turn this this rubbish form around. I, I'm going. I'm going Liverpool. And then we've got Fulham Palace. Palace are on fire at the moment. They are on fire. If I if I was one of the big teams, Liverpool, Eze Elise would be on my radar, and he Eze should be the one that they replace Salah for Salah. Yeah. What a shout that is, Eze. 
He's but I'm Palace. going Palace. Palace, yeah. Man United, Burnley. <laughs> they surely can't get beat by Burnley. Surely. But Burnley a bit a bit of form. But Burnley a bit a bit of form. But keep digging out a bit. Of, I'm go, I'm going to draw. I think Man United. I think Man United should win that. Newcastle, Sheffield United. Oh, it's Newcastle. It has to be. They lost. They lost it last night. They need a comeback. Wolves, Luton. They're both in terrible form, to be fair. But Luton are desperate for it. But Luton don't win away on the road. Wolves. Wolves. Everton, Brentford. Well, <clears throat> probably Brentford because the way Everton Everton will think now it's all over and done with. I bet you they don't put in a performance like they did the other night. So I've got to go with Brentford. I'm going to go a draw because if Brentford win, they're out the relegation fight. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. And then Aston Villa, Chelsea. What Chelsea to what Chelsea turn up? To be fair, I think Aston Villa may smoke them, but it just depends what Chelsea is like. I I wouldn't put any money on anything to do with Chelsea or Man United. Those are yeah. the two teams. No Aston way. Villa, I'm going for. Yeah, Villa. Let's go Villa. Then Sunday we've got Bournemouth, Brighton. Well, Brighton are playing tonight, aren't they? Against Man City yeah. or Thursday night. Now, what Brighton are going to show up? Is it going to be the Brighton that played Arsenal or is it a, a Brighton team? So, away win. A red card last night for Bournemouth. So, someone's getting it got on a straight oh, red. Brighton then. Uh, no, draw. Draw on that one. I'll go Brighton. And then the big one. Tottenham Arsenal. Oh, come on, you Spurs. I've got to go for the Spurs at home. I'm going Tottenham. Tottenham I think Arsenal. Son is due a game. Well, yeah. They do a game. The thing is, what you got to look at it is, they're all in the fight for something. Nobody's not fighting for nothing. So, I said that wrong as well. It's not the big one. The big one's next. Who are you going for, Tottenham Spurs? Tottenham, Tottenham, yeah. Okay, and then the big one, Forest, City. City going to smash them. I'm not going for Forest because I think Forest are just a disgrace. Absolutely. I'm going for a draw. I'm going for it. They're a disgrace to say that a referee is um, corrupt. Absolutely disgrace. And you know what we haven't talked about? Just thinking about that. A few weeks ago, what happened with the two managers, with Emma Hayes and, and uh, well, the male manager, just before we go? Well, glad you've reminded me. I'll put that on next week's show. Put it on next week's show. We for keep forgetting to talk about this. Yeah, we need to we need to speak about that. We need to speak about that. So if you if you don't know what it is, look at the Emma Hayes Chelsea manager incident online. If, and it was the League Cup final. Yeah, the League Cup final, boy. Well, it's been pretty quiet. Obviously, Collins Corner has not appeared again, so there's not a lot we can do that about Collins Corner. So we will feature it sometime when we know where Colin is it's been a great show thank you for Da Vinci Mobility for the ongoing sponsorship I hope you liked our show and if you've got any ideas of what you want to see on our show what you want us to talk about email him <laughs> <laughs> email him keep the emails coming in keep hitting the subscribe button we're doing a lot of uh, technical stuff, so it's easier to find us on uh, YouTube. Well, he is, because he's got nothing else to do, because he's got his phone back now. Yeah. And the other thing is, before we go, the statement that's gone up on our Facebook from one of our CEOs... Is on fire. Is, is on fire. Loving the interaction. Yeah. Loving the... The, the views and the points people are putting in. If you've not already got involved in it, get involved. It's a great discussion. An absolutely fantastic discussion. Johnny, it's always been emotional with our show. I'm out! Got drama, the saga continues. We ain't going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. We can't be stopped now. Cause it's bad boy for life.